Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the episode of the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez here. Hope you guys had an amazing Halloween weekend. Hope you guys are coming back to me. It's fun. Had some good times. Maybe you all went out to a Halloween party. You guys got a nice, uh, you know, got a nice buzz with some candy, of course. That's all I'm speaking up. I'm just kidding. No, I uh, hope you guys had a great, uh, great weekend with you and your loved ones. Hope you, you know, your kids got a lot of candy that you guys could definitely, uh, definitely raid. You know, I've I raided my kids' candy already, man. We got Tootsie Roll Pops. We got Butterfingers. We got uh, Milky Ways. All you name it. So uh, it was, it was a, it was a good night. Trick or treated for like a couple hours. You know, it's always a, you know, fun thing, especially with the kids. You know, they come home, they were so excited. They count the candies. They're like, oh, I want to separate the chocolates from the, from the colorful candy. And I'm like, all right. And I'm just like there, sitting in the background. I'm just getting moving on. I did not steal all the candies, guys. I did not. I promise. All right, so moving on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez here. Thank you guys so much. Always love it when you guys have the time, take time out of your busy schedule. I know a lot of you guys could probably be, you know, be like, oh, you know, I'm going to catch some sleep, get ready for a fun, fulfilled Tuesday for tomorrow. But you're like, you know what? I still, you know, I, I kind of have a soft spot for that, for that, uh, for that dorky wrestling guy on the GSMC Sports Network and Podcasting Network. So by all means, definitely love and respect you guys. We have a great show for you today all lined up. Today we're going to talk about some uh, some um, uh, WWE SmackDown. We're going to talk about some Monday Night Raw. We're also going to talk about WWE Crown Jewel. Um, in, our, in our fourth segment, we're going to talk about Montez Ford talking about how he is uh, he is frustrated with the uh, with the character development and creative um, you know nuptials that is his. Uh, you know that his his character and where his uh, you know his career it's kind of at you know in this pop you know in this moment i got some quotes i got some reports i want to talk about in our fifth and final segment we're going to talk about baron corbin baron corbin along with tegan knox indy hartwell recently uh released from wwe obviously you know with tegan you know she was great indy was great you know the the you know i think the shocking factor out of um you know who got released was uh you know baron corbin a lot of people thought that he was going to get resigned you know um and now uh you know he got a he got a text basically saying that, hey, guess what? We're not going to extend your contract. And then Indy Hartwell and Tegan Knox have 90 days until they can actually pursue a new wrestling career. If that's what they want to, you know, kind of get into. So we're going to get into that. But of course, before absolutely anything, I want to remind you guys to go ahead and hit up that super chat. Whether we've got a burning question or a hot take in terms of the world of professional wrestling here at the GSMC Sports Network, we want you guys to to know that we are all ears absolutely drop anything inside that chat should be awesome should be uh should be super sick make sure your voice is heard make sure i want to make sure that you guys feel like your voice is part of the mix it open shot drop your thoughts inside that chat and if you really 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 want to make sure your comment question or concern gets noticed on air why not use that super chat it's that dollar sign below the chat box anything you put in there will be talked about discussed about if it's really juicy it could be debated about so uh, yeah guys make sure you guys do that it's pretty awesome plus it's also a great way to support our channel here at the gsmc sports network uh we definitely love it when you guys sending the uh, send in those super chats it helps us keep the lights on a lot of these uh podcasts with these amazing passionate podcasters that have one uh one goal in mind is making sure that you guys feel like you guys have consumed the perfect amount of sports content. That's what we are here for. That's what we love doing. Your happiness is our happiness. So, you know, definitely love, uh, definitely love you guys, uh, you know, tune into the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, we are super grateful for each and every one of you guys who joins us here on the GSMC Sports Network daily. Um, you know, your support makes all the difference. So let's keep the conversation going. Let's keep this, let's get this party started, guys. Let's keep this party going. And, uh, you know, we'll make sure this show is bigger, better, and uh, stronger than ever. Remember to hit up those super chats, those super stickers, because you guys are super awesome. And once again, it's super chat, not your thing. You can still hit up the gsmcpodcast.net, hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. Just remember to Superman punch that. Like a subscribe button to the show. Follow the show. Follow the network here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity, 1,010%. But, of course, in terms of talking sports, it's inevitable. Disagreements and debates are going to happen. Some criticisms, and it's a okay don't be shy dropping inside that chat dropping inside that thought box i'm going to hear what you guys have to say um a thousand to ten percent so uh yeah don't be shy just uh you know unload that gun of criticism <laughs> all right moving on to the first segment we got some wwe 
Friday Night SmackDown review. All in all, I felt like it was a decent episode of SmackDown, but then again, what can you expect? Heading up toward Crown Jewel, you didn't really want to necessarily outshine what was going to happen on Saturday. So, you know, there was a lot of, you know, I feel like there was a lot of missed book spots, but I feel like it could have been better. But then, you know, like I said, you have the biggest event in, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia. This is kind of like their... This is kind of like their WrestleMania. This is an event that they look forward to, you know, the whole year. You know, they don't get international WWE spots like you have here in the United States of America. So whenever they have a chance to kind of watch or consume some WWE product um, live and, you know, in person, you know, WWE likes to like, you know, save all the content, save all the, you know, all the drama for once when it unfolds before Jeddah or Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So, you know, uh, the show was good, though. The show was good. Though. We saw Nia Jackson live Morgan. Um, Tiffany Stratton came out. She came out absolutely like trying to get in the heads of not just Liv Morgan, but also Nia Jax. I thought that was actually pretty cool. Kind of creating that unpredictability factor that Tiffany Stratton is, um, you know, she's going to cash in. Um, you know, once again, at the end of the promo, you had Nia Jax leaving everybody out. And of course, the match went to when you saw Liv Morgan defeat Tiffany Stratton. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's getting to the point where Liv Morgan right now, she's untouchable. You know, she has her insurance policy. She has Recover Rodriguez. She also has Dirty Dominic Mysterio and the rest of the Judgment Day. I feel like she's uncashinable, and I, and I know that's not a word, but uh, I feel like Tiffany Stratton can't cash in her woman's money in the bank because she has so much protection. It would be just like throwing your bet away, and I feel like Nia Jax is actually, you know, she's starting to kind of cohere to this reality that the only option the only safe option is for tiffany to cash in on her and uh obviously that comes to no surprise because you know you saw the numbers game play dividends uh on wwe crown george we're going to talk about in our third segment but uh, it's just it's just like tiffany stratton like you know it, you know she's the you know she's the briefcase holder you know she she holds the money woman's money in the bank right now there is no men's money in the bank so all the attention is on tiffany stratton and the fact that uh, you know it, it, once again kind of digging into what happened at wwe crown jewel so far we've had so many we've had multiple cash in attempts and it hasn't really came in fruition it hasn't really been taken seriously and you know it could diminish the value of the case at first when tiffany stratton had the case and there was no men's money in the bank uh, cash in possibility i was like oh my god this is going to be a great cash in like like you saw seth rollins cashing in at brock lesnar and uh you know roman reigns at wrestlemania but now the way it's been kind of playing out on wwe smackdown now it's starting to look to me like more like an Austin Theory kind of cash in. Like, you know what I mean? There was a couple of times where he came out and he was teasing it. He was teasing it. He was teasing it. And it kind of ended up to, you know, kind of being a joke. So, you know, definitely don't want Tiffany Stratton to fall into that category. I feel like uh, this uh, briefcase is definitely going to jumpstart her singles. Um, well, no, her her career, she's going to be pushed. Um, so I just wanted to be done right. I feel like she deserves that. Next, we have a Kevin Owens video talking to Randy Orton about what happened. He said, I don't want to fight you. Never wanted to hurt you. Now I'm going to. Classic, classic heel turn. Classic, I want the, the crowd to, you know, to continue riding this baby face that is Randy Orton because Randy Orton was never really like a baby face in the past of WWE. Even now he comes out and people are singing his, uh, singing his anthem, singing his, uh, you know, his entrance music. And he's just, you know, he's just soaking it in. He's happy. And I feel like overall Randy Orton is, uh, you know, he's definitely a WWE future hall of famer. And he's definitely like a huge sigh of relief for any wrestling fan. Every single time he steps into the squared circle with absolutely anybody staring across from him on the other side of the ring, you know, it's going to be a good match. It's going to be a good match because Randy has been notorious for putting on great matches within his career. Also, he's been notorious of punishing people who, uh, you know, kind of miss spots, kind of botch moves like it happened with, uh, you know, Kofi Kingston twice in his career. And obviously when you saw him go to St. Louis with NXT, the second episode of the CW song Battle, uh, Battle Javel, uh, Javon Evans and Javon Evans absolutely knew he, he messed up. He was like, oh my God. So like he even said, I'm sorry after the match. And I think Randy Orton's kind of at this point in his career where he's like, you know what? You know, I'm here to promote you. 
I'm here to make sure that you guys feel like you have a future with WWE as opposed to, you know, him being like, you, you, dude, you totally messed up my spot, man. That was supposed to be an awesome, you know, RKO off the top rope. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was very understandable and he, he, he gets it. He gets it. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. Um, Street Profits defeat pretty deadly. Love the win by the Street Profits. Want to continue seeing this uh, momentum moving forward. Naomi and Bailey defeat Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae once again. No belt. No WWE Speed Championship held by Candice LeRae. Like, what, what are you ashamed of it? Like, why isn't WWE letting her, you know, prance around the ring, letting her come down the, you know, the entranceway with the title? You know, it's the it's the inaugural WWE Speed Women's Championship. It should be like, like man, like we introduced the you know um, their their uh, form of a mid card belt for these women, and uh, you know I just feel like they're dropping a ball. I don't think that it's a uh, it's not being done correctly. I wanted to see Candice LeRae flaunt that championship like like she earned it, which she did, which she did. So she deserves all the glory. But right now, the glory is not upon. Any form of WWE speed, the men's, the women's, like any of that. So I don't know. It was it was kind of disappointing to see. And of course, uh, later on, uh, during later on in the night, I learned that Indy Hartwell was uh, you know released from WWE, and I was like, dude, that's crazy. She was just on SmackDown. And you know, it's I, I you know I feel like with the right bookings, Indy Hartwell could have been great. Uh, obviously, she was uh, you know she was amazing in NXT. She's an NXT Women's Champion. She's a WWE Women's Tag Team Champion with Candice LeRae. And then, the, you know, with that heel turn, too, that she had with Candice was uh, was pretty awesome. I thought it was uh, I thought it was great. It was good booking for her at the time. But it just uh, the way it kind of all planned out, I feel bad for Indy. But then again, once you know, Indy Hartwell has joined the list of many WWE NXT superstars who have debuted on the main roster, Raw or SmackDown, and have kind of just... Um, Kind of just been let down by WWE creative. So, you know, it, it sucks. It sucks. I would have loved to see her stay in WWE. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. What You know, what can we really say? Uh, next, uh, you know, Naomi said that she um, she's best Nia Jax. Um, pretty sure that she's going to be her next contender for that title belt. Jimmy, Jay, and Roman, you know, uh, they were talking inside the ring. He said, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy was talking to Roman saying that I made up with my brother. And then Jay, of course, was a little skeptical about showing uh, and, uh, you know, about showing emotions. Also, you know, kind of coinciding himself with Roman Reigns after everything he's done in the past. He said, you know, uh, I never forgot, you know, I never forgot what you did. You know what I mean? You know, I'm your equal now. You know, it's not like there's any power distance between him and Roman Reigns, which at this point is which is kind of true, you know. But at the end of the day. You saw the yeet happen. Roman Reigns, you know, he said uh, Jey Uso wanted, you know, a pact, wanted an agreement by uh, the original tribal chief being like, look, we're all equals now. I'm not above you. You're not above me. We're going to protect the family. Use. And of course, you know, his reaction was, uh, you know, he said yeet. And you can tell it in Roman Reigns' face that he was trying so hard not to laugh and smile because, you know, this whole yeet thing with Jey Uso. Is uh you know it's it's kind of put them over the top. It's put them over the top. I like it. I like it how fans are constantly eating inside uh you know inside the arenas, you know. But at the end of the day, it's just for me. It seems kind of it seems kind of silly, like you know what I mean. But it is what it is. You know, it's like it, it's 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 wrestling. You know, you have your uh, you have your catchphrases and uh, you know and stuff like that. A town down under in the backstage promo calls out the Motor City Machine Guns. You know, um, maybe this is the finally going to be the time when A-Town Down Under breaks up. To, to be honest, that's the only thing I'm kind of looking forward to watching this uh, watching this tag team match. I want to see Austin Theory absolutely demolish Grayson Waller because, you know, not being mean or anything, but Grayson Waller, you know, he he's kind of a joke. He's kind of a joke. And I'm not, you know, I'm not hating on him because obviously in terms of any wrestling superstars, I, I respect the, them as entertainers, athletes. And, uh, you know, all the time they spend away from, uh, you know, from home and stuff like that, like going on the road, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to kind of, you know, to kind of do that same kind of stuff. So of course I admire, I admire, but Grayson Waller, I felt like he should ultimately stayed in NXT. I thought he was kind of, a, he was kind of called up a little prematurely, but, you know, now you kind of have this, this feud, this breakup that could, con that could, you know, that could maybe send his career to the next level, I guess you can say, you know, so maybe he can be, 
realized or maybe he can be taken seriously on the SmackDown roster because as of right now, he's, you know, not really showing any kind of faith here, not really seeing Grayson Waller being anything more than, a, you know, than a side gimmick to, uh, you know, Austin Theory uh, eventually becoming a, you know, a single star being pushed by WWE and eventually winning a, winning a WWE championship. We had a fair four-way match. We had EO Sky overcoming Bianca Belair, Piper Niven, and Lash Legend. And I'm just in awe. I'm just in awe. Every single time I see Lash Legend enter the ring, She's phenomenal. She's, you know, she's definitely one of the best women's wrestlers in NXT, WWE, AEW, TNA. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what WWE has in store for her. Uh, EO Sky as well. You know, all these four women were actually pretty damn impressive. Bianca Belair, you know, enough said. She is truly the EST of WWE. Definitely, um, you know, one of the best in terms of lacing up their boots and, uh, you know, making their way onto the ring. And she's just loved. She's loved by the WWE universe. She's loved by her peers. She's absolutely, she's phenomenal. She's great. Bianca Belair is like your idealistic you know how sometimes when you know you're talking to your mother and you're like and they're like oh i want you to marry a woman that you know this and that and the other this and that and the other in terms of being a wwe superstar i feel like bianca Belair checks all those boxes that's the reason why she is in fact the est of wwe i want to see her jump back into the single scene once again holding a wwe women's championship holding a women's world championship but right now the thing that she has going on with B with uh you know jade it's okay it's okay and at first i gotta be honest i was a little cynical about it i was like why are you taking these two two top stars you know when jade deb debuted in wwe royal rumble you know she eliminated nia jack she eliminated like you know she was a complete an utter badass and it was like oh this girl from aew the longest reigning tbs champion you know, and like you see her come out to WWE, she comes into the tag team division. But then again, more or less, maybe that just depicts on the way WWE is portraying this woman's tag team division. Maybe, uh, you know, the belt isn't taken seriously because it's not featured on, you know, more PLEs or more main event kind of statuses. Because right now I feel like on, you know, on Raw and on SmackDown, you could definitely have these girls fight in the main event for those tag team titles. And I feel like it would create a little more prestige. It would have the titles to be, you know, kind of more of a bigger deal, I guess you can say. More of an astonished accomplishment as opposed to, uh, you know, receiving a little bit over five minutes a match for a, for, a, for a women's world tag team championships, which I don't think, uh, you know, is uh, quite sufficient. In my opinion, of course, a thousand and ten percent. And lastly, in mid event, you saw Randy Orton and Kevin. O no, you saw Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes defeat Imperium, pinning Ludwig Kaiser after um, you know after a crossroads. Kevin Owens, of course, came out after attacking Randy Orton, and you saw Gunther choking out Cody Rhodes. But once again, building up some storylines up to uh, WWE Crown Jewel. All right, guys, so hey, do not go anywhere. We got done talking about our WWE SmackDown review. And now, without further ado, we're going to jump on to some, some WWE Monday Night Raw, also taking place in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. It has already, already, already aired. I know this might come as a, you know, I have not watched it, though. So I'm actually very proud of myself. And I was doing research. Uh, I was doing research earlier this morning. And, uh, I, you know, I no, I don't think it, no, it was. Yeah, it was earlier this morning. And I was like, do not click on anything that says raw results or, you know, or or, or, or live action, you know, uh, uh, review and stuff like that. So I was like, OK, I want to I'm coming in to watch him and not raw absolutely blind. I'm as blind as a bat. I can't wait to see what happens tonight. I think they're going to tear the roof off this joint. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to share it with you guys when we come back. So, hey, do not go anywhere. <laughs> 